But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, everything in the body of a human being decays. Everything except for one bone. If the Prophet told me this, I will believe in Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That bone is Ajbu Dhanab, the tail bone. So after 40, 40 what days? Allahu Ta'ala A'lam. 40 years? Allahu Ta'ala A'lam. The Prophet says after 40. So we keep it as general as it sounds. What happens? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands angel Israfil to blow the third and last blow. What blow is that? Uh, the blow of? The blow of resurrection. Ahsant, fantastic. The blow of resurrection. Allah says, ثُمَّ fihi أُخْرَى Then one more blow takes place. فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ This blow will now start the cycle of life again. But let's see how it goes. Bismillah. The blow is made, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it rain. As it rains, it does not grow plants and trees. What will it grow? The tailbone. The tailbone, it grows. The bodies, they come together. The hand, the hair, the head, the leg. Allah brings all the body parts together from that tailbone. So not, to what extent does Allah bring us back? You know, it's said anytime you get a car accident, you will never be able to bring the car back to the way it was. Never. That's what in some engineers they say. But Allah, the best of examples, He will bring people back in the absolute perfect condition. Allah says, بَلَا قَادِرِينَ عَلَىٰ أَن نُسَوِّيَ banana. What does that mean? Allah says, I'm capable of bringing humans back, even the fingerprint. I'll bring it perfectly how it used to be, subhanAllah. Allah says, كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقِ Just like how we made in the beginning, we bring you back. Tayyib, the bodies are back. The souls are not there yet. Don't rush. This is just the body. The bodies are back. What happens? Think of the earth when all these bodies are growing. The earth starts to what? Shakes. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا Okay, then what's happening? Allah sends the souls. So the souls, they come like bees. They fly into what? The bodies. وَإِذَا النُّفُوسُ زُوِّجَتْ When the soul mates with the body. Okay, what's happening? خلاص. Now people are alive, coming to life. يَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ الْأَرْضُ عَنْهُمْ Sira'an, the graves open up quickly, one after the other. One grave, second grave. What's the first grave that opens? The first hand that comes out, the first body, the body of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. anhu al-qabr. The first grave to split open is the grave of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The brothers, uh, there's some people that died in an ocean. There's some people died maybe even in space. Aynama uh, takunu yati bikum wallahu. Jamia, Allah says, wherever you may be, I will bring you all. In Allah, ala kulli shayin qadir. I am capable of everything, and I, I could not pause here and continue to the next step, because we have to appreciate His greatness. We have to appreciate His power. Wherever you may be, I'll bring you back together, full body from a tailbone. Allahu akbar. I was just looking up a little bit, a heart transplant, or a cardiac surgeon, heart surgeon. How long does it take them to reach that level of title? It takes about approximately, there's a lot of stages, bachelors to medical school to fellowship to rot rotations, all that stuff, about 15 years to reach that level. Okay, once you do that surgery, how long does it take? Four to six hours to do a heart transplant. And I was just going a very simple method. Of, I know that any heart surgeon here or, or people in the surgery field, they might have a heart attack from what I'm saying, but chat GPT said you have five steps. <laughs> You split the chest. You take, actually, no, step one is getting ready. So I'm preparing the equipment. Preparing the equipment, split the chest open, take off the heart, put the new one, close the chest. Okay? Now, these steps, how long does it take? About four to six hours. Roughly average, five hours. So five hours to substitute hearts. How many? Not, not hearts, brother. Take off the S. A heart. And how much does this procedure cost? Huh. Where's Dr. Ahmed? Where is he at? Is Dr. Ahmed here today? Huh? Uh, the fan, because Mashallah does surgeries, Allahumma barik. Uh, so he does surgeries on foot. May Allah bless him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. It costs about $1.5 million for one surgery. $1.5 million. How will people respect that heart surgeon now? You see what just happened? You see how society looks up to them? You see what, how, oh, yeah, he, he, he just changed one heart, respect him, 15 years, this and that, all that stuff. What respect does the one who is able to bring hearts and legs and hands and brains and cells and fingerprints onto billions of people. How much respect does he deserve, Allah Jalla Jalalu? 
That's why what does Allah say? وَمَا قَدْرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ Qadrih. Allah says people did not give Allah the respect he deserves. And wallahi, he said the truth. Wallahi, Allah said the truth. May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. So let's go back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ذَلِكَ حَشْرٌ عَلَيْنَا يَسِيرٌ Allah says that was easy. If you ever go to, uh, what store is that? Staples. Staples has a red uh, button. It's a very interesting thing they sell. You put a battery into that thing, it's one button. What happens when you press it? That was easy. They actually sell it. That was easy. You finish a project, that you celebrate, right? Allah's the best of examples. Allah says, all that, that was easy. Fantastic. As people are coming out of the grave, how are the emotions? We'll split it into two, inshallah. The emotional state of the evil people. Then I'll talk about the emotional state of the righteous people. Sounds good? Yalla, bismillah. When I say about the evil people, there's a, a thing we have to all agree upon. What is it? Don't log off or sign out your attention and say, that's not me. You never know what happens to you. You never know at what state you may die. May Allah keep us steadfast. Say, Ameen. The most common dua the Prophet ﷺ ever said in his life, according to his wife, Umm Salama, may Allah be pleased by her. What's the most common dua? Who can help me? The most common dua. Go ahead. Sent me Allah grant it to you. What's the dua? Oh Allah, the flipper of the hearts. Ya muqallib al qulub. What do you want? Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Hold my heart steadfast upon your deen. Oh Allah, the flipper of the hearts. Hold my heart what? Steadfast upon your deen. If this was his most common dua, should it not be our two? But we can say it in a different way. We say it 17 times a day. Ihdin al sirat al. Same meaning. Very close to it. Fantastic. So here, the evil people, what's the situation like? Allah says, wajifa. The hearts in horror. Then Allah even show, tells you where the heart is at. The heart out of fear goes all the way up to the throats. Absaruha khashya. Their eyes are wide open, humbled. They're terrified. They know they messed up. These people will ask the earth, insanu, What's happening? What's going on? Then they realize, what is it? It's Yom al Qiyamah. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا Woe to us, we're destroyed. They know it. مَنْ بَعَثَنَا مِنْ مَرْقَدِنَا Who woke us up from our resting place? Hold on, brother. How is it the grave a resting place? You gave us a session back, I think, your brother, in September about the grave of the disbelievers full of punishment. How are they saying who woke us up from the resting place? Because what they will see will make the punishment in the grave a resting place. What they're about to see made all the punishment of their gossip, of their murder, of their backbiting, of their oppression in the grave which Allah prepared for them. It makes it seem nothing in compared to what they saw within the first second. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. That's why what do the prophets say? Today, Allah is so angry. He was never as angry and will never be as angry. May Allah protect us from Allah's anger. We'll talk about that inshallah. We'll talk about that. So they say, Woe to us who woke us up. Then they realize, This is what the most merciful told us about. Why did they say the most merciful told us about? Why did they not say the most supreme, the compeller, the almighty told us about? Why did the disbelievers say the most merciful told us about this day? Because they knew that the warnings that we get in dunya are rahmah from Allah. When your parents tell you, don't speed because you may get into an accident. Don't text and drive because you may get harm yourself. When they threaten, I will punish you if you do this and that. This is out of love. This is out of mercy. They don't hate you. Like, why are you always picking on me? I love you. That's why sometimes I have to threaten you. So the enemies on the day of judgment realize Allah's threats are mercy. Subhanallah. هذا ما وعد الرحمن. Continue. And indeed, the prophets have said the truth because prophets were sent with that message. Then they come, they know they messed up. They say, you know what? Ya waylana qad kunna fi ghaflatin min hadha. We never took this day seriously. We were heedless towards that day. We ignored that day. We used to make jokes of that day. Well, one guy went to hellfire and the other guy went to hell. We used to make fun. We never took these topics serious. Anyone spoke about it, we said, yeah, whatever. Show us someone that survived and came back and got resurrected. May Allah protect us. We were oppressors. Look to what Allah says. Ready? 
They said, we were not paying attention. We were oppressors. Ready for what Allah will say? وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا Allah says, you were heedless, I wasn't. Then Allah says, عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ I was not forgetful of what the oppressors used to do. Everything was recorded. There is a moment where you'll be judged. And the moment has come. Allahu Akbar. إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِرُهُمْ Allah says, I'm delaying them. لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ I'm delaying them to a day the eyes are wide open. There's a time and place for people's oppression to be given the absolute justice. May Allah protect us. So when, once they realize, I'm, I'm done, this is a bad day, what comes to their mind? Run. <laughs> right? You hear that sometimes video? Run. Right? And that's what comes to their mind. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ أَيْنَ الْ مَفَرْ يَقُولُ الْإِنسَانِ Where should we run? Where should we go? فَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ أَيْنَ الْ مَفَرْ Where should we run? Then they see their brother. Will the brother help them? يَوْمَ يَفِرُ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ When the brother runs away from his own sister and brother, blood brothers, they used to share the same bedroom, they lived together for the longest time. يَفِرُ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ Mom and dad who will give up the life for you, Wallahi, they'll give up their maybe heart for you. But mom and dad, لا. وأمي وأبي, I don't want mom, I don't want dad, run away. Even the mom will run away from her, her own child. The father runs away from his own family. وصاحبتي, even the spouse, even the one who he's married to for all these years, will run away from him. وبني, ya Allah, this one will shake people that have children. Even their own children, they will not care about them. Your son, your daughter, that you gave up a lot of the world for. لا, نفسي, نفسي. Allah says, Every person is very busy, concerned of their own. So Allah says, Kalla. No, you're not going nowhere. لا, وزر. There's no refuge today. Run, but you cannot hide. Run, but you cannot hide. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذِنِ الْمُسْتَقَرِ A day has come. You will now stand in front of the judge. And the judge is not the ICJ. It's not an international court of justice. It is Allah Jalla Jalalu. يُنَبَّأُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَّرِ The insan will be spoken about. What they have sent forth and left behind. All the things will be spoken about. The Prophet says this and he says the people will be naked at that day. Naked. And he says, uncircumcised. And he says, Hufa, barefoot. Who hears this? Aisha. She said, Ya Rasulullah, yandru ba'dum ila ba'd. On that day, no clothing, nothing. And men and women would be visible to one another and maybe be looked at. The Prophet says, Al amru ashaddu min an yahimmuhum thalik. Ya Aisha, the matter is way too serious for that, someone to think of their desires. Because everybody is busy on their own. May Allah protect us. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, these are the emotions of the kuffar, the evil people, the munafiqeen. May Allah protect us from them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But then, we may talk about the other side. And there's something I want to make clear, inshallah, throughout the matter of the Day of Judgment. Every single moment of fear for the disbelievers and the hypocrites and the excessive sinners, there are moments of joy and happiness and ease for the believers. Fair enough? And I will show you that as we speak. Yalla, bismillah. The people are coming up from the grave. Who are the people we're going to talk about? The evil? No. Who are they? The righteous. Yalla, bismillah. The first sentence, لا يحزنهم الفزع الأكبر That day will not disturb them. خلاص. Do I continue or we're done? All what we said will not disturb them. لا يحزنهم الفزع الأكبر Not just that. I want you to imagine... A believer, may Allah make you of them, Ya Rabbil Alameen, myself as well. We come from the grave, تَتَلَقَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ What does that mean? Imagine your grave is opening up, and who's waiting? An angel. Imagine. So you come out, you see the angel, تَتَلَقَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ So the angels tell them, هَذَا يَوْمُكُمُ الَّذِي تُوَعَدُونَ This was the day you were promised. Don't be scared. Allah تَخَافُوا Don't worry about the past. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Ready? وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ خلاص, you're going to Jannah, the day you were promised. So the person coming out may ask, and who are you? <laughs> A Jannah and everything will be just fine. Who are you? نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاؤُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ We were your allies in dunya, but you could not see us. We were made out of light. We protect you that day you slipped, almost got into this issue or that. We were there. I was the guy that helped write, you know, the good stuff. And 
I tried my time, to, uh, you know, hopefully you repent back to Allah. So the angels, they come. We protected you in dunya, and today, we also protect you. Let's go back to our discussion. And when you go to Jannah, you'll get everything you wished for. The river of Nutella, all the good stuff, all there. And everything you wish for is there. Who's the accommodating? Who's the host? Who's the host? Close. Nuzul and min? Rahim. The host is Allah, the most forgiving, the most merciful. You know how we said everybody is running from another? But comes to show you again, every moment of fear for the evil people, the righteous, is there's no fear. May Allah make us of them. Everybody runs from one another. Allah says, Everyone will be enemies to the other. Even best friends, your BFF, enemies. Except the righteous. Imagine a family, father, mother, uh, son, daughter, but they, they used to have three children. So mom is here, dad is here, the son is here, sister is here, but the third sibling is not. This family were together. This family helped each other out. Uh, this family reminded one another of salah. This family worked hard to make their house as Islamic as possible. Uh, the, the father worked really hard to educate his children. The mother worked really hard to preserve the dignity and the deen and the iman of the children. The children strived in the fitna of 2024, you know? They struggled in high school at Fordson or Etzel Ford. They, they tried their best. They worked hard and they're all together. But where's that sibling? The one that never listened. The one that gave everyone a hard time. The one who said, oh, I want to hear this stuff. The one who never took the deen seriously, but took the dunya way too seriously. May Allah protect us. But then people come together, best friends together, inshallah. But you may ask, what's the secret ingredient? Like, what's the secret that the righteous are having such a blast Yom Al-Qiyamah when things are going downhill for others? What do you think is the secret? Quran, fantastic. Why are they not scared? And I'm taking my time because this is very important, because we want the ingredient, inshallah. You know, have you ever done a, uh, I'm acting as if I ever do it, yani. a salmon? What do you do? You marinate it, sah? You put it in the fridge for how long? A day, two days. Huh? Almost, almost, yeah, and you khalas soaked, right? Because I want that ingredient to soak in us. Inshallah. What's that ingredient? Quran. Try. A close, repentance. Yes, they repented frequently. That's correct. You're, that's right. Quran is right. Don't get me wrong. Why are they not scared today? Because they always had faith in Allah. Because they always had faith in Allah. That, that is a right answer. That is right. Go ahead. They always, had a on Allah. they always trusted Allah. That is correct. That is correct. Why are they not scared today? Excellent. They live by La ilaha illallah and Allah fulfilled His promise. Fantastic. Huh. Why are they not scared today? They have Allah by their sides. They have Allah by their sides. Excellent, sister. Huh? Salah because you used to pray. Fantastic. Why are they not scared today? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the comfort. Allah gave them comfort. That is correct. Why are they not scared today? Because they tawbah by repentance. Go ahead. They were scared in the dunya. That's it, got it. They're not scared today because they were scared yesterday. They're not scared today because they were terrified back in the day. And then they made tawbah. And then they prayed. And then they read Quran. They feared there's a punishment. So be terrified today so you will feel safe tomorrow. And if you have false hope and false safety, Allah will not punish us really. Like, am I that big of a deal to Allah? Like, Allah's after me and care less. Well, there are other people killing innocent people. What? Because now I smoked weed. Khalas, I'm going to go to Jahannam. You have that false hope. Then the absolute terrifying moments in Akhirah. May Allah protect us. Look what Allah says in the Quran. Ready? About these people. يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْرِ وَيَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا These righteous, al-abrar. These wonderful, virtuous people, they are those who fulfilled their vows. They made a promise, a swore, uh, an oath, they fulfilled it, and they feared a day of what? Sweeping horror, fearful day, which is Yom al Qiyamah. What else did they do? They used to feed the people despite they want the food. Like, I want the food, but I will share it with you. That's how they used to do it. Who, used to, who did they used to feed? Miskin, the people with like a little bit of money, poor, yatim, the orphans, and captives, 
hostages, asira, even the asir we honor, Allahu Akbar, and we see today, Allahu Akbar, right? May Allah protect us. Why did they do that? Why did they feed others? Why did they do that righteousness? Is it for the cameras? Is it for, uh, make sure when I give you the hundred dollars, you start crying for the video to go viral on YouTube, okay? And then they do one take. Here we go, we have a, a poor person here. La. Why are they doing it? We can't touch people's hearts, but why do they do it? أحسنت إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله We do it for Allah لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا I'm not doing this I'm not giving that donation I'm not giving you that helping hand I'm not praying I'm not fasting I'm not attending I'm not speaking because of thank you from you and Jazakallah khair and the five star review that's not why I'm doing it I'm doing it for Allah not a thank you from you not disrespecting you but that's not my requirement your thanks is a bonus but it's not a requirement for me to keep going, inshallah. I want Allah to thank us. What else you're worried about? Inna nakhaf. Ah, isma. We are scared. What are you scared of? Inna nakhaf min rabbina yawman abusan qamtarira. We are so scared from our Lord on a horribly distressful day. Allah may punish us for our mistakes. Now, last ayah. What's the result? فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ As a result, Allah saved them from the evil of that day. وَلَقَّاهُمْ نَضْرَةً وَسُرُورًا And Allah made them radiant and beautiful, subhanAllah. May Allah make us of them. So be concerned when you sin against Allah, and if you sinned against Allah, and if you are sinning against Allah, repent now because there are consequences to it. To it. Show Allah that you respect Him. And forgive me this for this dunya example. If you ever went to speed and you see a cop, okay, you can speak to cops and they will tell you. If you see the cop and the cop knows that you saw him and you continue speeding, oh, he's angry at you. Yes or no? Like you had no respect to him. Like he didn't even see your brake lights going crazy, right? Oh, so you want to play that game. And look what will the cop do, right? This is a general example. Allah is the best of examples. Show respect to him when you break the law. Show respect. You know what? I'm weak, Ya Allah. I'm so sorry. I know this is my 34th time doing it. But Ya Allah, please forgive me. Show him respect every time. Because if you do, he will forgive you every time. Wallahi. That's an authentic narration. So we spoke a little bit about the emotional state of the evil people and the righteous people. Let's now talk about the physical state. Why does it matter and how do we know? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, يُبْعَثُ كُلُّ عَبْدٍ عَلَى مَا مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ Every single servant of Allah will be resurrected based on the state they died upon. How you die is how you are resurrected. How you die is how you are resurrected. So do your best to keep this in mind and I will do the same, inshaAllah, that do I want this action I'm doing to be the last thing I do in this dunya? Why? Why would it matter? Because however you die is however you will meet Allah. So always keep that in mind because you cannot guarantee that after this sin, after touching this or seeing that or saying this, you guarantee you have enough time to repent from that. So may Allah make the best of our lives the ending. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ Actions are all about how they end. So may Allah make our actions end in a, on a good note. Amir Rabbil Alameen. So I'll give an example. Some of the people that are resurrected, they will have the size of an ant. What do you mean? A guy will come from the evil people. Yawm al-Qiyamah resurrected as a human being, but as a size of an ant. Like, well, is that you? It's like, yeah, that's me. What was her problem? What was the sin? What is it they used to live upon and they died upon? Arrogance. The Prophet sallallahu says, The arrogant people of Qiyamah will be gathered like the signs of the ants, though they are looking like a human being. Humiliated. But you see the correlation, the connection between the punishment and the sin? They used to walk, they're better than everybody. Right? They walk, who's better than me? They used to look down upon people. So now they are literally being looked down upon. Subhanallah, may Allah protect us. Absolute misery. And Allah knows what happens. Some guy walks, steps over him, right? Knocks him out. May Allah allow the believers to do that if it's khair for them to the oppressors, Ya Rabbil Alameen, right? 
So then you have another group of people from the evil, they are resurrected like that, like coming from the tiny. Others come and they have two tongues of fire. Lisanan. Lisanan min nar. Why? What's their sin? Two tongues. The Prophet says, Man kana lahu wajhani fi dunya. The two faced people. You're a two faced person. You show love to that individual when they're in front of you. The moment they leave, you talk trash about them. You show that you love the believers. The moment you leave, you show hate to the disbelievers, especially the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. We support, uh, uh, we condemn uh, what, what's, what's happening. Then you open up your floor for them to attack your fellow believers. You see what just happened there? So we take what you do more than what you say. May Allah protect us. Then there's other people. They hardly have any skin on their face, hardly any flesh. Like, you just see bones. Why? These people never saved their face. Explain. The Prophet ﷺ says, ما يزال الرجل يسأل الناس. A guy who is begging people for help. Begging people for money. Begging people for assistance. Begging people for aid. Brother, is that haram? No, not saying it's haram. However, this person does not really need the help. Does not really need the money holding a sign, I'm homeless, but they're not homeless. They have a home better than yours, right? They might be people who claim that I need this. How many people today as we speak have GoFundMe, launch good, whatever it is, helping the Palestinians, but they're not, they're lying. Yes or no? They're acting like, you know what? I have my two kids here. We're all alone. I can still get PayPal payments, the Kadhabin. So they're asking people for help and so on, but they don't need that money. They will come, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, no flesh on their face, absolute misery. Completely, they don't want anyone to see them. Subhanallah. Wallah, in this dunya, you have a bad haircut. Huh? A bad haircut, you don't feel comfortable. You wear a hat. And you know what's so sad? We ask you, why, why, what's wrong with you? Why you look down? You say, I had a bad haircut. What do many people say? I didn't even notice you had a haircut. <laughs> yes or no? And you're just so careful. And you're like, Wallah, you look good. But that's how it is from a haircut. Imagine how people are Yawm Al-Qiyamah for their flesh, two tongues, or the size of an ant. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So yes, ask for help, of course. Sometimes you should ask for help. But be realistic and save face, save dignity as much as you possibly can, inshallah. Sounds good? Try to balance it out. The fourth category, I have five for you. I believe, no, I have actually for this evil of more than five. I have seven. Number five, people will come Yawm Al-Qiyamah very serious hadith, but show absolute respect to insha'Allah. This is number four, I believe, right? Every treacherous person, man or woman, will have a banner. Think of a banner, a pole, stuck in their behind. Allahu Akbar. Why? This is the pole, a banner, to expose the person. This person was treacherous. يُقَالُ هَذِهِ غَدْرَةُ فُلَانِ مِنْ فُلَانِ they are treacherous because they betrayed so and so. They claimed that I will fulfill the promise, but they cheated that individual. Cheaters to the uh, fellow believers, cheaters to a certain system, a legitimate one. They betrayed, the, imagine an imam who betrayed the people behind him. Imagine a ruler who was treacherous towards his people and used to sell the resources to the enemy at a good price to make money and he's starving his own population. Treacherous. A banner in their buttocks. Look what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says. يُرْفَعُ لَهُ بِقَدْرِ غَدْرِهِ The bigger the treason, the bigger the treachery, the bigger the banner. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Now there's something can follow up to this one about the banner aspect. If someone stole an item, imagine Yom Al-Qiyamah, someone stole an item, they will be resurrected with the item. And those who have been robbed before, you know how that may feel. Especially if the one who robbed you was a family member. Jewelry in the house, I lost my ring, I lost the necklace, I did this and that. Maybe it was a friend, it was a relative, it was this. Some, imagine that person comes and they can't get rid of it. Like, I don't want no one to know that no, it was you and you keep holding it. And there'll be a moment of embarrassment. Allah says in the Quran, You bring it with your own hand, the thing that you stole. A phone, a laptop, anything, a dollar, whatever the case is. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gives us another category of people. They are the ones that come with their mouths filled with fire. Resurrect. Brothers and sisters, we didn't even start judgment yet. Allah's not there yet. Allah has not 
uh, descended in a way that befits his majesty and start judging people. This is just the beginning. So you see why the evil people said, who woke us up from our sleep? Made the grave look nothing? That's just the beginning. Mouths filled with fire. Who are these people? This is a bit terrifying. Huh? Mushrikeen are close. Ahsan. Uh, people did bad deeds, what kind? Something to do with the mouth, they used to eat. Uh, uh, you're very much right. Those who, last one. Pork? Uh, e eating pork, P possible. May Allah protect them, say I mean. They're the ones who used to eat the money of the orphans. Those who eat the money of people, i.e. steal their money. Right? So this money belongs to orphans. You have been entrusted with this task. But they say, you know what? Let me take this against the, what's acceptable, uh, beyond what is legitimate. And they take it. This is fire in their mouths. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Maybe you have uh, someone that you have been entrusted with a certain orphan. Maybe your sister passed away or your brother. And then they left money behind to take care of the kids. And he told uh, the kids that are still young, I will take care of it, Ammo or Khalu. I'll take care of it. And then you don't take care of it. Then you spend it on your own children. Then you spend it on your own self. And when they get older, there's nothing left for them. May Allah protect us. So may Allah make it easy for all those who have been entrusted with money. Say I mean. The seventh, but not, last but not least, they come possessed. They come majaneen. They come as if there is something like shaitan entered the body. And they're going crazy. One of the worst states, Yawm al Qiyamah. Who are these people? Go ahead. Maybe bad influenced people. Ahsant. Go ahead. Riba. Those who deal with riba. Taban loosely translated as interest or usury, but I'll stick to the Arabic term. Allah says, Alladina ya kuluna riba, those who consume riba. لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي يتخبطه, يتخبطه الشيطان من المس. They get up as if they're possessed, going crazy in the whole day of judgment because they dealt with the riba aspect. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Now, with this being said, as I mentioned, and that's something to keep in mind, every stage of Yom Al Qiyamah, there is a good part, inshallah, for the believers. So let's talk about the physical state of the righteous people. May Allah make you and I of them. Say Ameen. Bismillah. I have here a few, inshallah. Number one, they come excited, happy, their face radiant. Can you imagine you were laughing on that day? Inshallah, that would be your case, inshallah. Excited, laughing. Bro, I was waiting for this. Alhamdulillah. I'm done with this nasty dunya. I'm done with COVID. I'm done with snow. I'll tell you that for sure, right? And you're just excited. Yawm al-Qiyamah. Let's get rolling. Alhamdulillah, having the best time of your life, bi subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the face is full of noor and radiant. But what do you think they, these people did? Because I told you about the evil people. Uh, for example, the ant. What did they used to do? Arrogant. arrogant. Fantastic. So would you full of light and so on? Give me one thing. Give me one thing. There's a lot. Give me one. Huh? Give me one. Uh, go ahead. Uh, merciful. Possible, right? Uh, showed mercy to people. Sisters. Huh? Tell me one. What is it? Uh, sadaqa, charity, ahsanti, excellent. Uh, any specific hadith to do with light? Go, try. Salah. Salah, uh, Try, 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 you go. Wudu. Wudu, ahsanti, wudu, there's truth to that, fantastic. Last one, sisters, go ahead. A zakah, giving uh, the obligatory charity. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he emphasized salah. How salah brings light, and specifically which salah? The salah that you pray during the dark times, dark night, i.e. Fajr and Isha. So tahajjud works for sure. But Fajr and Isha, we have a hadith, yes. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even emphasized a lot on the men here. Bashir al mashaina fi dhulami ila al masajid to the, give glad tidings for the ones that walk during the dark times to the masajid bin nur al tami yawm al qiyamah with absolute complete light on the day of judgment. May Allah grant it for our brothers and sisters, ya Rabbil Alameen, whoever would like to go to the masjid. But further emphasis due to other hadith for our brothers. Tayyib alhamdulillah, we didn't even start yet. Uh, what else? Entourage of birds, clouds, like a security. You have the executive protection. How is that? Have you ever rented a car before? What do we do when we rent a car? Decline insurance. <laughs> I'm not paying $24.99 a day, I'll tell you that. Right? I'm going to wing it, inshallah. Tawakkul. <laughs> right? Yom al you have full coverage, 
full coverage. How do you get that massive coverage? Birds flocking over you, Allahumma barik. Like, what a beautiful feeling. Did you guys ever arrive to an airport and someone was holding a sign? You saw that before? And the guy holding a sign was wearing like a suit and a hat, chauffeur, right? Driver, was that? It happened to me one time. Yes, mashallah, right? But in dunya, may Allah grant us an akhara, right? So I was holding Majid Mahmoud. I had a job interview in an oil company in Houston. It's called Aramco. You heard about Aramco? They have a branch in Houston. So I went, and the guy, Majid Mahmoud, I'm like, yep, that's me right there, right? Mashallah, right? Black Lincoln outside, Allahumma zid wa barik. Right, opens the door. Like, this is a great, paid for the flight and everything. MashaAllah, forget da'wah now, right? <laughs> Engineering hat. So I got to the job interview. MashaAllah, I destroyed it in a negative way. I had no clue what he's talking about. Because <laughs> I'm more mechanical, they were looking more chemical. But anyhow, Alhamdulillah, I thought, Ashadu, la ilaha illallah works. <laughs> you know, Muslim, Aramco, Saudiya, Umrah. You know what I mean? So Alhamdulillah, I went back home and I never got a call back. But it's all good. It's all good, Alhamdulillah. May Allah grant us Jannah, say Ameen. But in Akhira, the two groups of birds over the heads, why? Full protection. What did these people do? And I hope when we're saying these things, you're like, oh, I'm going to make sure I'm not going to be looking down upon people. I'll make sure I'm not two-faced. I'll be nice, not be rude. Yani, right? Uh, I'll make sure I don't eat people's uh, or the money of the orphan. I'll be careful, inshallah, avoid interest. I'm going to make sure to go to pray in the masjid. I hope these things, this is not just uh, speech, entertainment, or just this is benefit, this is change, inshallah. What did these people do? Try. What is that? You're very close. Athkar, very close. Huh? Go ahead. Ahsan. So I'm just gonna add just one word about memorize. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Iqra'u al-Quran, read the Quran. Why? فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةَ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ Because the Qur'an comes interceding, protecting the people that read the Quran. Then he emphasized two surahs. اقرأوا الزهرة ويني Read the two bright ones البقرة وآل عمران Chapter 2, Chapter 3 Read them, why Ya Rasulullah? Because they will come as two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds in ranks protecting, interceding for the one that was reciting them So may Allah make us recite بقرة آل عمران May Allah make us memorize it Say I mean, there's addition, there's addition there's, I want, We want dunya too you know what's in dunya? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says two things. فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا baraka. If you read Baqarah Ali Imran, Allah puts baraka, blessing in your health, in your time, in your wealth. You thought Baqarah is the longest. It is the longest surah. Like it's going to take a lot of time. Allah puts baraka in the time. Subhanallah. Oh, I need to go work. Allah puts baraka in your money. Ajib. Baqarah Ali Imran, a miracle from Allah. Number two. وَتَرْكُهَا حَسَرَةً And giving it up is a cause of grief. Like when you see the reward, you're like, I should have read it. I should have read it. I should have known better, right? And then I said to forgive me, there's third, وَلَا تَسْتَطِيعُهَا الْبَطَلَةَ And if you read them, no magician will ever impact you in a negative way, inshallah. وَلَا تَسْتَطِيعُهَا الْبَطَلَةَ Fantastic, ya Allah. See how beautiful Yom Al-Qiyamah is? I had one, I had one person uh, after sharing the first lecture, so we uploaded the first video about the, what happens after death. So I had one, one sister, she said, I never in my life imagined there's a bright side to death. This is the deen. There's a dark side, there's a bright side. We learn both. We fear the dark, and what blank we for the bright hope. Ahsan, may Allah make you of those who experience it. Say, I mean. Number three, ready, inshallah. Number three, blood with beautiful smell. That's a little bit, sounds contra. Huh? Misk, uh, The dam smells like musk. But the blood is not repulsive. Like, you know, like, oh, no, like, beautiful. Like, this, how is that? That sounds a bit weird. No, no, Yom al The blood will look gorgeous on that person. Like a... A paint, art, a piece of art. Meshbas look great, smells beautiful. One of the most beautiful smelling people in the entire Day of Judgment. Who are these people? Huh, go ahead. Shuhada. May Allah grant us the reward of Shuhada. Say Ameen. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, No one is wounded in Allah's cause. Ya Allah. But will come on the day of the resurrection with his wound bleeding. You're wounded, you will come with that wound, Yom Al Qiyamah. But the color is the color of blood, but the smell is the smell of musk. Ya Allah. I want to share with you a hadith that I learned recently, and I hope it brings you joy the way it brought me, and maybe even more, inshallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ma yajidu shahidu min masil qatl. This authentic narration. The martyr does not sense the touch of death, illa kama yajidu ahadukum min masil qarsa. Except as one of you senses the touch of a, what, pinch. Like how does it feel to get pinched? Okay, just a regular pinch. 
That's how death feels to those who are martyrs. Allahu Akbar. So may Allah grant us يعني, the reward of shahada and maybe it brings a little bit of ease now that we see things online and videos and stuff like that. So may Allah accept them as shuhada. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Now this part number four, beautiful people. It might throw you off. It kind of threw me off when I was young. People will come on Qiyamah with very long necks. Like who wants that? No, no, that would be gorgeous on that day. You having a very long neck, you being tall is remarkable. How is that? Think with me. How are you being tall is so awesome. How is that? Try. Yeah. Fantastic, right? When you have a tall, you can see what's happening, right? Fantastic, huh? Maybe you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fantastic. There's truth to that, huh? MashaAllah, you'll be recognized, right? Like, what an honor. Like, you know how it feels when you're 6'3 and you walk? <laughs> like, I'm not sure how does it feel 6'3 brothers and sisters, right? May Allah bless you all. Say, I mean, right? You're recognized. It's, it's beautiful. Like, mashallah, this person is remarkable. Loud or long necks. You know, subhanAllah, you go to a simple Sea World show and everybody's like jam packed and you're like, I, I got to see everything, right? Right? And miskin, if you're like uh, shorter and so on, like you're struggling, I want my money back, right? <laughs> subhanAllah, fireworks. It's a, the best thing is fireworks because it just goes in the sama, mashallah, <laughs> right? But anything else, like, what's going on? What's happening? He sees everything. Like, bro, Allah, I see Jannah. MashaAllah is right there. MashaAllah. Oh, hala. how is everything amazing? Who are these people? Uh, who are these people? Try. Uh, the ones who are humble? I sent him. No, mumkin, mumkin. That's the accurate answer. The ones who used to call the Adhan. The ones who used to call the Adhan. They have the ones with the longest necks on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. You called people, now you get to see the call. Allahu Akbar. The fruits of the call that you used to make. And yes, it, you can do Adhan. And it's very rewarding when you do it at your house if you uh, were to pray at home. Tayyib, last but not least. Last but not Anybody knows a situation, authentic. Don't make up stuff now on me, huh? You know a state in which a person is uh, resurrected at a physical state, Yom Qiyamah, in a good way? Do you know an authentic narration in ayah? Hmm. For a, for, a, for a few slices of pizza. <laughs> I know it's free tonight, but see Allah. Huh. You know one? Give me a physical state. Someone resurrected, doing something. Wow. Huh. You think you know one with a hadith? Ten dollars. <laughs> Every time I do ten dollars, wallahi, the richest among us. Like, ah. <laughs> there's something, there's something about ten dollars. <laughs> I think I know. Try. Was it the people of Musa who died? Oh. Were resurrected? Mumkin, mumkin. May Allah ta'ala alam. But I don't have a narration for that. Huh? Come on. You got it? I'm laughing. Laughing? Uh, you have a hadith or ayah? Uh, the ones that repented. Repented, okay, okay. Huh? Last one. Going once. $25. <laughs> now the shiyukh like, I got this. <laughs> ah, Nazir, what do you think? <laughs> if you don't have to go through that. They come. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك. Who are these people? They died in Hajj. Subhanallah, they are the ones who passed away doing the pilgrimage to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It happened in authentic narration. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, anhum, he says, while we were in Arafah, the day of Arafah in Hajj, and there was a guy on a camel, he fell, and when he fell, he died. He passed away, subhanallah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, اِغْسِلُوهُ بِمَاءٍ وَسِدْرِ Wash him with water, and sidr is a type of leaf with a nice smell to it, but it's not meant to be like a cologne or perfume. Then he says, وَكَفِّنُوهُ فِي ثَوْبَيْنِ Shroud that dead person, the hajji, huh? with two shrouds. وَلَا تُحَنِّطُوهُ What does that mean? Do not put perfume. Because when you're in Umrah and you're in hajj, you cannot and should not put perfume, subhanAllah. So do not put perfume on him. Do not cover his head because also in Umrah and Hajj, you should not cover your head, obviously, for the, uh, for the men. He will be resurrected. Doing talbiyah. How, how beautiful is that? SubhanAllah. May Allah grant us the best. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. So here, people are now resurrected. Think of the images, small guy, fire, two tongues, going crazy, all that stuff. All of a sudden, someone is calling. Their call is being made. You got to pay attention. Was Tamir? Huh? Where is the caller? Where is he at? Was Tamir? Yawma yunadi al munadi min makanin qareeb. Someone is very close. It's calling. Calling? What is he saying? 
Halumma ila Rabbikum. Come, it's time to meet your Lord. 